Hi, this is Witches in the Workplace Part 2. I was just amazed at the number of people that actually watched the video. You know, it was something that I had been holding in my spirit for a while. I was actually in the throes of it and experiencing it. But sometimes, a lot of times, we think that we're the only ones suffering and that we're the only ones dealing with something. But I want to thank everybody for watching it. But I, I feel like I have a word from the Lord for you that I'm just like, it is a real problem what the prophets of God and God's people are dealing with in the workplace. And one one of the women, one, someone replied and said that, you know, that um, that the Christians are being assaulted in the workplace. And I truly, truly believe that because Satan, want, if Satan can take over, there's a, a principle called the seven mountain principle. And it is the areas and the realms where people, it's, it's the church, um, education, media, you know, entertainment, all these seven mountains that we are to occupy if we're going to be, as Christians, we're going to effectively um, take the earth. So Satan wants to occupy every realm. The Bible says that he is the God of this world. He wants to occupy every realm and influence every realm. And so the workplace is part of his playground. And anybody that can oppose his authority and come against his agenda, he wants to move out of the way. But I, be, I just want to tell you that, and I believe in my spirit, that God has heard your cry. He gave me Isaiah chapter 49, starting at verse 25. And it says, but thus says the Lord, even the captains of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I will contend with him who is contending with you. I will save your children. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh. And they shall be drunk with their own blood as with sweet wine. All flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am your savior and your redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. God is contending with those that are contending with you. He is fighting against, fighting against those that are fighting against you. I, I want to admonish you that God has heard your cry. And I believe that God is, God will be a, a swift witness to you. And that even people, even people in authority will start being removed. Their jobs will either, either be dissolved or they'll be moved to another position. They may even be fired, but I believe by the power of the Holy Spirit that God is going to start moving people out of your way that are opposing his authority and trying to stop his agenda. As a prophet of God, I was a marketplace prophet, but as a prophet of God, God has divinely set you in the organization that you are in. He has set you there to be a light and to be a witness. And Satan's assignment is that the people that you are assigned to, that you never get to because you're so beat up and beat down and assaulted by the powers that be, that you lose sight of your assignment. One of the things that um, towards the end of my marketplace career, there was a young lady, I but God kept telling me, um, the job is yours. The job is yours. I even by faith went and drove around the building. God, okay, this is my job. And the Holy Spirit said, it's yours. But it wasn't mine for the reasons that I thought it was mine. There was a young lady there that I had the opportunity to spend time with the whole, um, almost the bulk of the two years I was there, had the opportunity to spend time with her and minister to her and spend time with her. And I really, truly believe that she was part of the reason that God sent me to the, that job, that building, that position. And then I had the opportunity to minister to other women in the, in the, the, um, in the building that I was in and pray for them and minister to them and pray for their families and pray for their children and prophesy to them and encourage them in the things of God. And I really believe that. And even in that position, God put me on a global platform in the sense of that organization. It was a very large organization, over 11,000 employees, pretty much a national organization. And God put me in a global position where I had the opportunity to mentor their employees and speak to their employees on a grand scale. And I believe that that's the reason that God sent me there for that, that, that reason alone. And so I want you to not lose sight of your assignment, not lose sight of your focus. So we're, we're going to, I'm going to fast forward you to, so post, post the, the job, leaving the job. I was, I was bitter. I was, I was hurt. You know, I can finally say that the sting is gone, but I was bitter. I was hurt. I wasn't hurt because I let, 
I was I left. I was hurt by the way it happened, but I knew that it was God moving me on. I already knew that it was time for me to go. Just did not like it, like the way it happened. So I went to I, I urge you that find a prayer partner or find someone that ask God to show you someone in there that you can yoke forces with that you guys can um, come in agreement and pray together because there's power in agreement. The Bible says that one p- could put a thousand to flight and two could put ten thousand to flight. So I knew I need to get past that. <clears throat> Excuse me, because in unforgiveness and bitterness is a way that the enemy can keep you entrenched in where you are, where you will get stuck and never move forward. And I, that was not going to happen to me. So I found a prayer partner. I found someone that could come in agreement with me. I needed to forgive some people, and I did. But one of the things, and so I, I can honestly say that I've moved on that, and life for me is flourishing. And I also want to encourage to you that uh, allow God to give you the strength to endure where you are, but I promise you that he has another assignment for you that will cause you to flourish and grow. But he needs you right where you are right now. And I want you to obey obey him and be sensitive to his spirit. And you don't have to fight with them. God said, stand still. He told Jehoshaphat, stand still because the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle is not yours. Jehoshaphat did not lift one weapon. He began to praise and he called the skilled singers. And the Bible says that the enemy was confounded and destroyed himself. So back to me post leaving the marketplace. I know I had to forgive. I knew I had to move on. I wasn't going to stay in a place of bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness and allow a root of bitterness to spring up in me. So I got a prayer partner, as I said, and we walked through that process. And the one thing that the lady said to me that was that was so powerful for me, my heart, I was so hurt and just so tired with the organization that I was just going to walk out and leave. But I knew as a Christian, as a prophet, as a woman of God, I have to be where I am responsible for the reputation and what I leave behind. And so I knew I had to leave right. And I went back just to leave right and to leave an honor, to not to um, be a light and a witness to those around me. And as I was in prayer, there are three people that were praying, they're praying in agreement for me. As I was in prayer, the woman said, she said, I hear, I heard one word. And she said, I heard the word dignity. And she said, God said you left right. And so that was my finality. But I want to encourage you that God has another place for you. That if it's time for you to move on, leave right. Nobody can push you out of anything that if God, God has set you there. So let me just pray for you right now. Father, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Every child, every son, every daughter of yours, God, that is experiencing experiencing um, witches in the workplace, oh God. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are covering them with your blood right now, God, that you are protecting them, that you are contending with those that contend with them and that you are fighting against those that fight against them, God. I decree right now that no weapon formed against them will prosper, Lord God, and every tongue that will rise up against them shall be condemned, Lord God, and I praise you right now, Lord God, that you are putting a shield of protection, a hedge of protection protection around them, God, because you said that the angels of the Lord are encamped round about those that fear you, God. I decree that you are sending angels on assignment, Lord God, and I come against stress and anxiety and worry and fear, God, and I decree that you will be a swift witness, and Father, that you will embed in their spirits that you alone are their provider, God. You are the one that cares for them, God. When Just when the, the river dried up for Elijah, God, you had provision for him somewhere else, Lord God. Father, but I also decree that you give them supernatural wisdom, direction, understanding, clarity. I come against the spirit of confusion right now. I come against the spirit of confusion that is assaulting your people, your prophets, your children right now. And Father, I bind him and I loose him from his assignment right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, I thank you. I decree that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard their hearts and guard their minds in Christ Jesus, Lord. And Father, I thank you. I stand in agreement with them, Lord God. I lock arms and hands with them. And Father, and I thank you and I praise you right now that we decree it so and done in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to close um, responding to the witch that um, responded to my post. I don't have anything against witches. I'm not afraid of witches. Witches do not have authority over me, but I pray for your salvation. You said that you were a Christian turned Wiccan. 
if you turn, if you were a Christian that turned wicked, there was something about God that you have never experienced. God is a loving father. He cares for you. He loves you. I believe that it is the spirit of rejection that moved you out of the church to, to serve false gods and idol and, and fall into idol worship. But I, I, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus, that God, the spirit of the living God would draw you back and that he would show you that he is a father to the fatherless and a defender of widows and that he will show you how much he loves you. The Bible says that every hair on your head is numbered and that your name is engraved in the palm of his hand. So God bless you and I'll talk to you guys soon.